Hello guys, welcome to Ramta Solutions. Welcome to your lesson on grade 12 financial maths. Today in our second lesson, we are introducing future value annuity. Okay, we are introducing future value annuity. In the last video, we had said to you, when we talk of annuities, we're basically talking of payments made at regular intervals, all right? we are talking of payments made at regular intervals so you don't change you make those and uh, that amount of payment or that amount you pay that amount at a regular time if you paying per month it's per month if it's per quarter it's per quarter you don't change now when you pay like that we call that an an annuity now looking at future value annuities these we mentioned that this is where you saving and so on right so let's not waste any time and get into it okay let's not waste any time and get into it so at the end of this lesson you must be able to see how this formula got to be okay so the first case study is when payments are made at the end of a term and the person that we are using is Lesedi. So the question says, Lesedi invests 1,000 rand at the end of each year for five years. How much will she have after five years if the bank offers her interest of 10% per annum? I will wait for you to take out this data and then I will proceed. So just a minute and then I will proceed. So this will be an interesting topic, guys. While we are on it, this will be an interesting topic. And while we are on it, you can read the article on future value annuity on our website. Um, we have a full article on this, which explains everything. Okay, which explains everything. Okay. All right. So I believe you are done because this says you are investing a thousand rent at the end of each year for five years. This is where you are going to use timelines. So we will say timelines. Okay, that's interesting. So let's say this is T, T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, and lastly, T5, right? So the city is investing 1,000 rand at the end of each year. This point here is the start of year one. This is the end of year one. So this is when she starts making her payment. The end of the start of year two, the end of year two, she's making another payment. The start of year three, the end of year three, she's making another payment. Making another payment here. And lastly, making a payment here. All right. And lastly, making a payment here, all right? The interest that the bank offers here is 10% per annum, all right? It's 10% per annum. So you have done grade, um, financial mathematics in grade 10 and 11. So now, as you can see, we will say, to actually find the accumulated amount of this investment, what we need to do is to say, you know what? Um, I don't know why I have this. Okay, so I will say the accumulated amount is, let's look at it, that thousand, okay, that thousand, one plus 0 0.1 because it's the interest to the power, let's see, this account, this amount was in the was in the account for how many years let's see from here we start counting one two three four for full four years so it will be to the power four plus the second installment here is it it was in the account for how many years one two three okay so it will be one thousand into 1 plus 0 0.1 to the power 3. The third installment, 1, 2. So it'll be to the power 2. 1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.1 to the 2. 
the fourth. Here is it. One for a full year. 1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.1, right, to the 1. Plus, the final, it was in the account for how many years? 0, all right? So it is 0. Now, take your calculator and press and calculate this. Take your calculator and find this. So let's see. This is a thousand to let's see. I will wait for you guys. So plot this on your calculator. Tell me what you're getting. If you are like me, you got 6,105 rent and 10 cents. Right. If you are like me, you got 6,105 rent and 10 cents. Right. So we're going to prove, we're going to prove this in a formula. Because imagine if, she was investing this for like 20 years. I mean, how, how, how many things were you going to be writing? It was going to be long, right? This is why you're doing maths. And when you do maths, you simplify things. So now let's say generally, okay, you invest X per 10. Okay, generally you invest X amount per 10. Okay, uh, for n years, okay, at interest i, at interest i, okay, okay, at interest i. So, I will, I will limit our n to five years, okay, I will limit our n to five years, so to simplify this for us. So let me draw the timeline again. T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. And we said our interest is I. And let's say this started investing at the end of year one, invests again at the end of year two, at the end of year three, at the end of year four, at the end of year five, right? At the end of year five. So what I want you to see now is we can now find the total that she has invested, but because we're using um, variables instead of numbers like we did there, it's not going to help, right? So let me show you. So we are saying the accumulated amount is basically, it's basically check. The first X is in the account for one, two, three, four. Okay. So it'll be X into one plus I to the four. One, the second was into one plus I to the three. Let's confirm. This is the second. So let's see. One, two, three. Happy? It was three. The fourth will be to the power two. Right? The fourth will be, sorry, the third will be to the power two. Let's see. This is the third. One, two. Now the fourth will be to the power one. The fifth will be to the power zero. All right. Let's confirm. The fourth, here is it, one. The fifth, of course, zero. Now, further simplification, we have x into one plus i to the four plus x into 1 plus i to the 3, plus x into 1 plus i to the 2, plus x into 1 plus i. I don't have to write plus 1. And this, any number to the power 0 is 1 plus x. So rearranging, okay? So rearranging this. So rearranging this, we have a equals x 
plus x into 1 plus i plus x into 1 plus i to the 2 plus x into x into 1 plus i to the what to the 3 plus x into 1 plus i to the i to the what to the 4 right so what i see here i somehow see a quadratic sequence right i see a quadratic sequence where it's a so s of n equals a into r r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1 or s of n equals a into 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r let's see i do see the first term i will call it x the r i will call it term 2 divided by term 1 it looks like it is i plus 1 our n our n this n i understand here it's 4 all right i understand our n here is 4 all right our n here is 4 all right our n here is 4 and this somehow tells us that you know what maybe we should leave it here so i don't want to call it n so i'm all four i want to leave it as n okay i want to leave it as n as because i want to help you make sense of it later okay i want to leave it as n because i want you to make sense of it later okay so n is n it's fine now i want us to call s sub n i want us to call it f while we are on it i want you to look at this r usually or oh, not as you know our i is percent so this means our r is greater than one right i is a percent which is in decimals it's less than it's either it can be one or it can be less than one but can never be negative so obviously this means the r will be positive and therefore this means we must use this formula okay now let me show you so this means s sub n equals x into r to the n minus 1 uh come on man r to the n. okay r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1 i said let's call our s sub n f our x we sorry this is a not x this is a our a was x right it was x what was our r it was one plus i it was one plus i to the end what was our r again it was one plus i minus one further this says to us f equals x into one plus i to the n minus one all over as you can see one minus one all over i so this is the formula that you have seen or that you will use a lot this is the formula that you saw in the previous in the opening slide let's go there this is the formula that you saw in the previous opening slide can you see it now this is the formula in the opening slide so with this formula be careful write it again f equals x into one plus i to the n minus one all over i this f is the future value okay is the future value is the amount that you will have in future okay and then this n please be careful it is not the number of years it is the number of installments okay it is the number of installments i will say to you to find this n do what you did in your sequences and series say check your last installment minus your first installment plus one if you can do this you will never go wrong okay if you can do this you will never go wrong remember i said to find your n say last minus first plus one however this formula 
as it is, works when payment um, is made at the end of each term only. Okay? Works when payment is made at the end of each term. Okay? As it is, payment is made at the end of each term. Okay? When payment is made at the end of each term, you can use this formula as it is and also the number of years, okay? The number of installments. And again, while talking of the number of installments, it's basically, um, it's your number of years multiplied by a frequency of your interest. Okay, so it's basically this, the number of years multiplied by the frequency of your payment, okay? So, Let's verify the case of Lesedi, uh, okay? So back to Lesedi. So back to Lesedi. Lesedi was investing 1,000 rents, if you guys recall, and her interest was 10% per annum. I want us to go to the number line or timeline. Check this out. Check this out. To get the end, you say last, which is term five, plus initial, which is term one. I want to show you this. It's very important, guys. That's the mistake that kills a lot of us. So our end is five minus one plus one, which is five. It's easy like this. Okay? It's easy like this. So draw a timeline. In the next videos, you will see the different cases okay and when the time is broader okay so we are okay all right perfect so remember i said when payment is made at the end of each term if they say five years you can basically say five times the number of times that the interest is quoted all right so let's see now with the formula f equals x into one plus i to the end minus one all over I, what is this? A thousand into one plus zero point one to the five, right? To the five minus one all over zero point one. Now, let's see. Taking out your calculators, guys. One thousand into into oh, one point one to the five. Minus 1, close it, all over 0 0.1. Check the answer that we are getting now. The answer that we are getting is 6,105 rent and 10 cents. Right? The answer that we are getting now is 6,105 rent and 10 cents. Let's confirm if it's the value that we got when we made that long calculation. It was, can you see that? So now you can imagine if you had 20 years, how, how many times were you going to be writing this? It was going to be a, a lot of time consuming. But now you have a formula, right? Now you have a formula. This is why you're doing maths. You derive these formulas so they make sense. Remember, guys, you use this formula as it is and taking its number of, uh, number of installments, what do you do? You take the number of installments with the number of years that you have. If they were saying you have 10 years and then your interest is calculated per month, your end was going to be 10 times 12. It's easy that way. Remember, the most important thing is to pay attention to what? Payments made at the end of each term. If a payment is made at the end of each term, you use this formula as it is. In the next videos, we are going to manipulate this video. Guys, if you can watch this carefully, and of course, do comment if you have questions. I will answer them. I'm telling you, you will master finance. Okay? So, this is it, guys. See you next time, and bye-bye.